Hello from Mobile World Congress 2024. I'm here together with Andre Shilyanko, CEO of Porta One. Hello, Andre. Hi. Andre, MWC 2024, what are you showcasing this year? As usual, we're trying to help uh, telcos to launch new services or better operate the ones they already have. But this time we are adding something new. We used to be a software provider for many, many years. Now we have a hardware kit for rapid IoT deployments. The idea is there are so many companies which would like to innovate and launch some new thing, whether it's for agriculture, for security, for smart home. But a lot of these experiments, they failed the hardware circuit design manufacturing with all the delays and short, shortage of microchips. So we solve it with IoT Mill. I call it, it's like a Raspberry Pi, but for IoT, so something which is already tested, already working, and where you just need to add a few lines of your code to make it work for your specific IoT project. Okay, would you say that IoT is one of the new or next revenue streams for telcos? I mean, there were a lot of telcos, especially if you look at Europe, they tried it many times, but it was not really successful. Well, IoT itself, it's a huge market and uh, everybody likes to show this total addressable market in the range of billions. I think the telcos before, they were not doing it the right because uh, they were trying to sell SIM cards and SIM cards, it's a commodity. So if you build a business and maybe you're successful today selling 10,000, 100,000 SIM cards, somebody will come tomorrow who will sell them slightly cheaper. So what we're trying to advocate to telcos, IoT for them, it's not just connectivity. It's making those companies, the new companies, to be part of IoT ecosystem, which may include bringing them IoT mill devices so they can get new startups to deliver the services faster and with a higher rate of success and then getting more of these uh, boxes. SIM cards can be included for free. And while they're doing this, they can offer these companies maybe edge computing, maybe local data warehouse capabilities, maybe something else which is needed to their market, maybe ability to sell their services for existing telco base. And then it's going to be a profitable way and sustainable way of doing IoT business for telcos. Okay, so you would you say that IoT Mill is a fast go-to-market IoT solution for telcos? Exactly. All right, thank you. When we look at the market for telcos, so AI is a big buzzword. I think you're also affected from AI, obviously. So can you tell us a bit more your vision, how you would use AI, how you I can help, especially when you talk about BSS, OS, to make things more efficient? Mm -hmm. Well, I have a monthly podcast for Porto One employees, and I tell them every month, and we share internal success stories about people using AI in different ways. Because the question today is not whether to use AI or not, or whether to use it or become obsolete. So we use it extensively for our internal development and uh, our processes. Since our systems are typically on the backside of the telco, so we don't have a lot of experience yet with interacting through AI with customers, but that's something which I think everybody should do because instead of customer having to call a call center or trying to navigate through website, trying to pick up the right product, this can and this should be done from the tools of AI. So that's going to be the first wave and it's already there and a lot of people are doing this. Of course, as usual, there's a lot of hype. There's a lot of uh, like AI label just to put on the product which has nothing to do with it. but the market will separate the good ideas, the good execution from the bad ones. But also I think that the next thing which will come into place, this is really when we will settle to the new balance between capabilities of engineers, of developers to create new products together with AI. Okay, that's very interesting. So telcos, we see the transition over the last few years. They turn more into tech calls, you know. Mm -hmm. Suddenly they're developing super apps. They're, they're very, uh, they say, diverse in their product offering and development. So do you see, just as a disruptive question, do you see that any telco would probably at some point develop their own BSS, OSS? Mm -hmm. And uh, we've seen, that I remember, I'm old enough to remember the early 2000s when every telco would start to develop their own internal system. Well, I was part of a development team in Telenor doing this. And uh, it's not always successful and you have to be careful like, how to invest in engineering resources because they're always limited. With AI, 
a developer can be more powerful, but still it's a one or two or three developers. Uh, and we've been advocating this open architecture, ability for customer to go and do some customization and changes. We provided the source code for many years. But we also been telling the people, okay, you can spend the time with your developers to create something which is already there, or you can really add value there. So I think the most important thing for telcos is to think, yes, we have now the great tools. How do we maximize the return of engineering investment? And uh, right now, with the proliferation of APIs and ability to do low-code integrations, I think this is where a fundamental shift will come because we used to, and many telco executives have this big drawings on the board of like 4G architecture with a whole bunch of boxes. And this was a schema which was designed by smart people and then kind of like pushed to everybody. But not everybody needs it. And right now we have opportunity to create the flows of customer experience, which makes sense for this operator. And most of these things, they can be done internally by telco operator because data synchronization with low code, with AI, it's easier. And then of course they will for some boxes, they may find a specialized system, and I, don't, I doubt any telco will have resources, for instance, to develop a BSS like Porto One develops with other 200 engineers, but some of the things they can do themselves. So there is more flexibility. I don't think anybody should develop their own BSS unless they really enjoy the process and they don't care about the budget and uh, the timelines. But uh, all in all, I think it's an uh, opportunity for telcos to get better fitting systems, provide better service to the customers and uh, make everybody happy. So uh, so that means you actually would say there always should be a wise approach when using developer resources, especially as a telco, use it where it's really necessary instead of starting something where you probably have not this vast experience a third party provider could bring in. Because at the end of the day, it saves you time where you can develop more. Exactly. So I would say, uh, Developing integrations for local systems, the local portals, the local markets, it's a, it should be done by customer. It could be done by customer. I would be actually happy uh, when uh, our developers are doing some specific integration work for a specific customer for one project only. I know it's kind of wasted resources because the same team, they could have developed a new feature which would benefit hundreds of customers. So if they can find some local resources to do that, and we will focus on making our core product better, everybody will benefit. All right. Thank you very much, Andre. Thanks for your Thank time. Thank you. Have a great show. Thank you. That was Tech Africa News from Mobile World Congress 2024. You can find more on techafricanews.com.